All right, hey YouTube, Nate here. This is gonna be a Macworld reflection for Macworld 09, similar to what I did last year. Just gonna give you a few thoughts on Apple's announcements. But the first topic I wanna to touch on is not an announcement, but this is about this fact that Steve Jobs did not make it this year. Early on, maybe about a month or two ago, we learned that Steve Jobs would not be making it because of his health. I must say at first, I was a little scared you know, I always saw that someday Steve Jobs is going to have to leave the company, and it's bound to happen, and it seems like it could be coming close. I'm not saying that Apple is nothing without Steve Jobs, but Steve Jobs just is a great salesman, and he really makes Apple a lot of what it is. But all in all, uh, it went pretty well with Phil Schiller doing it. At first, I must say, he looked very nervous. He was kind of a little stuttering and um, he didn't sound, he just, his voice just sounded nervous. I don't know if anyone noticed this, but I did and I was, I was a little like, is this going to be what the whole show is like? But it definitely got better and I really thought he did a really good job. So I really just want to hand this to Phil. Um, good job. I know you're not watching this, but I think you, you made it, you know, interesting. Uh, it was long, I mean, from what you were working with, you did good. I know... We didn't really get a lot of what anyone wanted, really. So let's just get into it. Uh, I must say, though, I was not expecting a lot out of this Macworld. I, for some reason, just did not get as excited as I normally do. Like, I almost even forgot until I accidentally went to Mac Rumors and saw the keynote was up. And I'm like, holy crap, how did I almost forget about this? You know, I should have just... Something about this year just didn't seem as... Woo. So, and, you know, my prediction was right that it wasn't very woo. So let's just get into it though. First things first is iLife09. The main thing they've touched on with iLife09 was iPhoto. He spent the general portion of the iLife with that. And I must say iPhoto looks pretty nice. If I was able to just upgrade one app in my iLife suite, it'd probably be iPhoto because I have no need to upgrade the iMovie I have. I love using it. And I have Final Cut Express too, so why bother? So I probably won't upgrade to iLife. But when it comes to iPhoto, I think it's really nice because I haven't even upgraded to 07 yet. Or was it 08? I have 06. I know that much. But I really love iPhoto's new face, faces, places, and events. And overall, I just wish I had it. Um, so face detection is in there, which is really cool. At first, I thought it was just going to be like the Facebook detection where it just puts a box around and says, type in the name of this person. But then it goes a step further and actually recognizes people and their faces and says, is this Phil? Yes. So that's really cool. And I wish I had that. And then you can sync it up with Facebook. And if someone change, like if you don't know someone in that picture, I don't know, sometimes you take pictures of random people and someone adds their name in the picture, it'll automatically go back to iPhoto and save it. So that is really cool. Sorry about that cut. Also with iPhoto, uh, there's geotagging now, which is pretty nice. That goes along with places where you can see where a picture was taken if you have geotagging or you can add it. You know, that's a pretty nice feature. I personally would not take the hassle of putting every place I took a picture in. Maybe if I went to, let's say, France, then maybe I would take the time. Otherwise, though, it does look pretty cool how it uses Google Maps integrated and you can just see all the areas. Overall, it looks like they put a lot of effort into making iPhoto what it is and it looks pretty nice so iPhoto will get a thumbs up next up was iMovie Ugh, last Macworld iMovie was very very crappy everyone was disappointed it looks like they took the same general concept with the really weird looking timeline and the viewer down here and generally improved it with a lot more options and it looks like you can do a lot of professional stuff in it it's more easy so like for instance, I saw a green screen was on there, which is crazy for a bundled movie editing software to have green screen. That's pretty ambitious of Apple. So I'm going to give iMovie a three-fourths thumbs up, only because I still don't see myself needing it. But I definitely, over iMovie, the last iMovie, thumbs up, because they definitely took the same idea and flip-flopped it. But I still feel like the format's a little weird. So other than that... GarageBand has like lessons now and that's kind of cool. I already know how to play 
piano. I took five years, and I know a little guitar. I don't see myself using it. It just seems a little weird. And then they have the have a professional teach you, which is kind of cool until I found out you have to pay. And is it really worth it when you can just look up tabs online for stuff like that? I don't know. I mean, yeah, they said you're going to be learning all this background stuff about the song. and So, I mean, maybe it'd be worth it. I might try it out sometime just if there's a song that I like enough, but I doubt it. Other than that, that was the only things they really talked about that they upgrade. I'm assuming there's maybe some new templates on IDVD. So, yeah. Next up was I Work. To be honest, this part kind of bored me um, of the keynote. Not to say that I'm not interested in new iWork stuff, it's just presenting word processing and keynote stuff and trying to get you all excited is not easy. And they were just pretty much demonstrating, hey, look, we can do this now. So iWork 09, I get some, it got some nice upgrades. I personally use Microsoft Office Mac just because that's what I'm used to. So Microsoft Office I've been using since, you know, ever since I first started word processing so I haven't tried iWork I might sometime I I did try pages and it was nice from what I've seen it was just I wanted the compatibility to be easier for school so next up was the MacBook Pro uh I was I was hoping to get more than just this but this is pretty much the only hardware that we got and it was pretty much taking the other MacBook Pro and making it 17 inches. One nice feature though is because the 17 inch is popular among professional users, they added the matte screen as opposed to the glossy display. Good job, Apple. Um, I know plenty of people, for instance, David the Creative One I know hates glossy. I personally am kind of iffy iffy on it. I like glossy how it looks like David said, when I'm movie editing on my MacBook, the glossy sometimes can get annoying, and I do notice it sometimes. So I think Apple is pretty... I'm, I'm glad they added the non-glassy display. It's a $50 extra fee, but that's because they physically have to take the glass off the MacBook and add a different um, casing around it. But that's cool that they did that, and they take the time, because they do, they, they do listen to their customers, which is great. And other than that, it's a basic MacBook Pro. It seems to be running pr It's pretty nice. 4 gigabytes standard memory, which is insane. My MacBook came with 512 megabytes standard, so that's pretty huge. And other than that, it's your basic MacBook Pro minus FireWire 400. It has FireWire 800, which if I believe it has an adapter, which it better because most cam all camcorders use FireWire pretty much now except for some of the smaller ones that are just like the flip that uses USB but you're gonna find FireWire on most camcorders and that usually will go to 400 I'm not sure if you can get it into 800 like I know that my cable is only 400 and so I don't want to have to go out and buy an, eight, an 800 cable I'd rather maybe buy the adapter but it'd be nice if they included it anyway so that's a little bit yeah other than that Nothing real exciting about the new MacBook Pros. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, iTunes. They have three song options now. They have the 99 cents, which was originally what it was. Now they have a 69 cent, which they said most songs are going to change to over a 119, I believe it was, option. So that can be a good thing or a bad thing. I mean... You're going to be annoyed when you want a song and it's 119 and you're like, wow, I could have bought this for 99 cents before. But at the same time, when you get the 69 cents song, you're going to be like, woo. So, yeah. And then DRM free music is going to, everything's going to be DR free by quarter one with iTunes Plus, which I believe you have to pay extra for. But I, I should have researched that. But I'm pretty sure iTunes Plus costs extra, which is kind of lame. So yeah, I'm going to finish this up now. That was pretty much it. DRM Free Music Glow is good. Makes you able to play it on more than just your iPod. But I'm going to wrap this up so I don't go over 10 minutes. So hopefully I don't. So thanks for watching and Macworld 09. Yeah, that's pretty much the sum. Thanks for watching.